here today to wake up to see a new day that we've never seen before. I am especially grateful. Yes, yes. 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 Well, we're going to pray and we're going to get into the lesson today. Father God, we just thank you this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. For we are always excited, Lord God, yes. for you said in your word that new days brings new mercies, Lord God. Yes, Lord. So today, oh God, we just thank you for your mercy, Lord God. We thank you for your grace, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, for allowing us to come into this house today. For sure. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, always for the prayer that has gone forth, Father God. Hallelujah. And Lord God, we just thank you that right now in this lesson, Lord God, that there shall be none of us but all of you, oh God. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, and fill us, Lord Hallelujah, and give us your mind and what you would like to say this morning. So, Father, we just praise you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Well, this morning, um, we are in 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 4, and 6 through 13. But we're going to start in um Samuel 1 Samuel 15 1 through 23 let me get your glasses yeah excuse me <laughs> forgot my glasses <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much thank you baby Ooh, that's better okay we're going to do something a little different today you know our our lesson is young david Young David anointed as king. But as my wife and I were studying this lesson, um, you know, we felt like we wanted to give you a little history beforehand, before we got into the lesson. So we're just going to read a little bit. Uh, well, actually, it's a little bit more than a little bit. It's a, <laughs> it's a few verses. But we wanted you to see what happened and how this came about. You got it right there? Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah. what I like to do is we're going to start out reading in 1 Samuel uh, 15, 1 through 23. Okay. And what this lesson is, this is showing you why Saul is, lo is, is, why Saul is losing his being king. Mm -hmm. Disobedience. I want to show you the disobedience that Saul had and why God is removing him from being king and why he is choosing David to be the next mm -hmm. king, okay? Because Saul was the first king of Israel, okay? But we want to show you uh, that disobedience has caused his removal, okay? Okay, so... Uh, we're starting off in 1 Samuel 15, 1. One day Samuel said to Saul, It was the Lord who told me to anoint you as king of his people, Israel. Now listen to this message from the Lord. Uh, 1 Samuel, Samuel chapter 15, 15 uh, verses 1 through 23. Uh, I am New Living Translation. Okay. 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 I, I have the Schofield <laughs> Study Bible, so we have a different one here then. Okay. okay. All right. I didn't know that you had that. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> now listen to this message from the Lord. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army has declared. I have decided to settle accounts with the nations of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekites nation, men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. Verse 4. So Saul mobilized his army at Tilam, there were 200,000 soldiers from Israel and 10,000 men from Judah. 
Then Saul and his army went to a town of the Lamachites and lay in wait in the valley. Verse 6. Saul sent this warning to the Kenites. Move away from where the Amalekites live or you will die with them. For you show kindness to all the people of Israel when they came up from Egypt. So the Kenites packed up and left. Yeah, it's like you don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> Seven. Then Saul slaughtered the Amalekites from Havia all the way to Shur, east of Egypt. He captured Agag, the Amalekite king, but completely destroyed everyone else. Verse 9. Okay, well, if you would hold on right there. Okay. Uh, you see where he said, uh, and I have the Schofield Study Bible. So our Bible reads a little different. Um, verse 9, it says, And he took Agag, the king of the Am Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of his sword. Now, if we look back in verse 2, he says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, um, excuse me, uh, excuse me, uh, verse 3, he says, Now go and smite the Amalekites, utterly destroy all they have. Now, this is what God told Saul to do in verse 3. He says, go and destroy the Amalite, Amalites, Amalekites. Thank you. I have two different versions here. Um, the Amalekites, and he says, destroy them, their kids, their the, the oxes, the infants, the camels, the asses. Destroy everything, mm -hmm. wipe them completely off. Mm -hmm. And then right down here in verse 8, I wanted to show you the disobedience, okay? Verse 8, he said, and he took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive. Mm -hmm. See, he didn't do what God told him to do. Okay, go ahead, Spear. <clears throat> verse 9. Okay, verse 9. Saul and his men spared Agag. Agag's life and kept the best of the sheep and goats, the cattle, the fat calves, and the lambs, everything, in fact, that appealed to them. They destroyed only what was worthless or poor quality. There was another disobedience. Mm -hmm. They kept the best, you know, mm -hmm. the fat, uh, the fat, should we say, mm -hmm. you know, the sheep and the, the rams and, you know, the oxen. Mm -hmm. He, he didn't kill him. There was another sign of disobedience right there. He kept what he wanted to keep. Mm -hmm. Okay, go right ahead. Verse 10. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I am sorry that I ever made Saul king. Wow. For he has not been loyal to me and has refused to obey my command. Saul was so deeply moved when he heard, when he heard this that he cried out to the Lord all night. Early the next morning, Saul went to find, or excuse me, Samuel went to find Saul. Someone told him Saul went to the town of Carmel to set up a monument to himself. Then he <laughs> went out to Gilgal. Went to set up a monument to himself. To himself. Verse 13. <laughs> When Samuel finally found him, Saul greeted him cheerfully. May the Lord bless you, he said. I have carried out the Lord's command. Now, here he is, all happy, <laughs> thinking that he's being obedient to the God. Uh, you know, in his eyes, he was right. Right. In, in your own eyes, you're right. And here he is saying, I've carried out the commandments of God. He didn't so he, carry out the commandments hey, of God. He lied. Several <laughs> times we're going to see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, go right here. Verse 14. Then what is all the bleeding of sheep and goats and the lowing of cattle so, I hear? Now Samuel was saying, if you didn't did what God told you to do, why do I hear these um, sheep and these <laughs> oxes and these goats? Why do I hear them if you did what God told you to do? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Verse 15. It's true that the army spared the best of the sheep, goats, and cattle. So I admit it. 
but they are going to sacrifice them to the Lord <laughs> your God. Now, he's using that as an excuse. We kept them so that we can sacrifice to the Lord your God because we know God. We know God, yeah. We know God likes sacrifice. And, you know, then that was the way that they, you know, for sin. You know, they made a sacrifice for their sin because you got to realize back now we're under the law. Okay, go right ahead. Yeah, back then. Yes. We have destroyed everything else. Then Samuel said to Saul, stop. Listen to what the Lord told me last night. What did he tell you? Saul asked. And Samuel told him, although you may think little of yourself, are you not the leader of the tribes of Israel? The Lord has anointed you king of Israel. And the Lord sent you on a mission and told you, go and completely destroy the Amalekites the sinners, the Amalekites, until they are all dead. Mm -hmm. Why haven't you obeyed the Lord? Why did you rush for the plunder and do what was evil in the Lord's sight? Verse 20. But I did obey the Lord, Saul insisted. <laughs> I carried out the mission he gave me. I brought back King Agag, but I destroyed everyone else. Then my troops brought in the best of the sheep, goats, cattle, plunder to sacrifice to the Lord, your God, in Gilgal. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? Amen. Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of rams. Amen. So we wanted to read, to, to go over that so that you could get a history of what happened to, to why he's being removed as king. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to get into our lesson text. Okay. And we're going to be in first Samuel 16 and one. Okay. Um, and the Lord said unto Samuel, how long would I mourn for Saul? See, Saul, uh, Samuel mourned all night. He cried all night. He was so sad that God was, was removing um, Saul from being king. Mm -hmm. He mourned and cried all night. Mm -hmm. And here's God saying, he said, how long will I mourn for Saul? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill thy horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, uh, Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Okay, a ring, he says, uh, fill thy horn with oil. A horn is something that that they kept the oil in. It was the oil that they used for anointing, mm -hmm. for anointing kings, okay? Mm -hmm. So he told him to fill his horn with oil and go to Bethlehemite and go see a man named Jesse. Jesse has eight sons i believe he has eight sons and god god is going to select a king of israel among these eight sons okay one of these eight sons will be selected as king uh verse two and samuel said how can i go if saul hear it he will kill me and the lord said take an heifer with thee and I say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. So Samuel was afraid to go there because mm -hmm. being kings, a king is aware of everything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Someone was going to tell him that Samuel was there looking for a king or, you know, yeah, whatever. He looking, uh, I'm not going to say interviewing <laughs> his sons, but, you know, having having Jesse's sons brought before him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But Saul was afraid to do that. But God had a plan. It was natural for, for them to make sacrifice. That's why God said, take a heifer with you. You're going to make a sacrifice there. Mm -hmm. You're going you're gonna to kill this animal as a sacrifice to me. But while you're there, I want you to call Jesse to come to this sacrifice. Okay? And that, and that right there is throwing Saul off. Saul saying, okay, it's normal for him to do mm -hmm. sacrifices. That's no big deal, right. you know. Right. Uh, verse 3, it says, 
and call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him who I name unto thee. Verse 4, and Samuel did that which the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem, and the elders of the town trembled at his coming. Mm. So, you know, then, back then, a prophet was, he worked closely with the king. Mm -hmm. You know, the prophet was very respected. Mm -hmm. uh, the lesson tells us that um, Samuel going to that town, to that small town, was like the FBI, the FBI director showing up. You know, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, my goodness, what's going on? Mm -hmm. You got the FBI director showing up at Flint City Hall. <laughs> Just a little example. <laughs> what's going on? You know, mm -hmm. so the, everybody trembled there. They were frightened by Samuel coming mm -hmm. because you got to realize back then, if a prophet came, he could bring good news or bad news. He could bring a word from God saying whatever. Mm -hmm. He could bring good news, but they didn't know why Samuel was coming to their small town. So all the elders in that town, they trembled and they were afraid. Verse 6, and it came to pass when they were come uh, that he looked on Eliab. Eliab, excuse me. Eliab. El Eliab. Eliab. Okay. Eliab and said, surely the Lord anointed is before him. Now, Eliab was tall good looking, strong, <laughs> kind of like, remind you of me a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, remind you of you, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Eliab was a strong, good looking, tall man. And Samuel said, surely the Lord is going to choose him, but this is a good looking man here. But here's the thing about God. He doesn't look at our outer appearance. Right. He looks at the heart of man. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I just, I had something, um, it's in my book. Mm -hmm. Um, I had, I had wrote down three, uh, different scriptures to where, uh, God looks at the heart of man and I, uh, it's been misplaced here, but for, if my memory serves me correct, you know that in the Bible where he says that if a man looks upon a woman and lusts in his heart. OK, he said, count that as adultery. Do you see that a certain act that you can do in your heart or think about or meditate on can be held against you as sin? So this I just wanted to show you how important it is for the heart, because, you know, your heart is. It's what God looks it's, at. It's the heart of me. He doesn't look at the outer. He doesn't even look at. Um, your, actions, your your statue. Right? It because says your statue, your right. continence, right. how you look, how you built, mm -hmm. you know, what you wear. He looks at the heart he of looks man. At the heart. Yes. He looks at the heart. Because you can do a lot of great things, but is your heart there? Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It could be to show, to be showing to man. It's also, as you know, in the lesson he says where he says that do not give me alms grudgingly. He says, if you're giving alms grudgingly, he said, I don't want it. It's the heart. So when you give to God out of your heart, you give it freely and you give it mm -hmm. willingly. Mm -hmm. But but if you're giving grudgingly, he says he don't want it. Mm -hmm. That was just an example of the heart. Mm -hmm. That was just in the giving of the heart. Mm -hmm. Verse 7, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance. Don't look at his face or his height or his statue, mm -hmm. because I have refused him. For the Lord see it not as man see it. Mm -hmm. For man see it on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Mm -hmm. uh, that was something that we were just talking about. I had note there for Acts uh, 13, 22. Uh, there was something there related to that. Acts 13, 22. Yes. I had wrote down all of the uh, verses and I left it in my Sunday school book. I it must be in the car with my notes on it, so I'm using my wife. But I had all of those verses and the information written down on them. Mm -hmm. Acts uh, 13, 22. But 
God removed Saul and replaced him with David, a man about whom God said, I found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. Thank you. He will do everything I want him to do. All right, amen. I was mistaken. Um, um, Deacon Montgomery had my book. <laughs> <laughs> and th these here were just a few. If we look at Proverbs 23, verse 7, and these were just some things that, that I discovered that's relating to the heart. Proverbs 23 and 7, it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So, you know, I can be with you and, and we're having a good time and you think I'm your friend. Hey, let's eat and drink. Mm -hmm. But my heart ain't with you. I don't like you. I don't care for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm mean, basically. Because he said his heart is not with you. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone love you, they love you out of their heart. You know, and that was just one. That was Proverbs 23 and 7. Matthew 6 and 21 says, uh, for where your treasures is, for where your for where your treasures is, there will be your heart. So what you love, that's where your heart is. That's why we must love the Lord. We can't let anything else come take precedence over over us coming to church, mm -hmm. serving God, you know. Mm -hmm. Um we must love the Lord because if we love him, we're going to keep his commandments. And you will see it in our actions. You will see it in our fruit, the, the way that we live our lives, the fruit of our lives. It's going to show you that you love the Lord. Um, and, and Matthew 5, verse 28, it says here, But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her hath committed adultery, with her already in his heart. That was the, the one that I said earlier, that you can sin just by looking at a woman, lusting at her in your heart. Mm -hmm. So I just want to show you the importance of how your heart, how your heart feels, how your heart, how you think and feel, how God judges it, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So those were just three things that I found that was related to the heart. Okay, uh, we're at verse eight here. Um, then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Solomon. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen him. Now, Abinadab is, Jess, is Jesse's second oldest son. Mm -hmm. Jesse had eight sons. Um, Elab was the oldest. Abinadab is the second oldest because he's bringing the children out in order of their age. Okay. Now, Abinadab, he says here, neither had the Lord chosen this one. So this is uh, Samuel saying, no, this, this is not the one neither. Mm -hmm. Verse nine, then Jesse made Shema to come to pass. This is Jesse's third son. And he said, neither had the Lord chosen this. Mm -hmm. So those three boys of Jesse's, they, they were not the one that God was going to anoint as king over Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Verse 10. Again, Jesse made again, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. Now, he made seven of them come before Samuel. Mm -hmm. And God did not choose any of those seven men mm -hmm. that came before Samuel. Mm -hmm. And Samuel said unto Jesse, the Lord has not chosen this. He hasn't chosen this man neither. Mm -hmm. uh, verse 11, and Samuel said unto Jesse, are, that, um, are here all thy children? Is this all the children that you have? Um, and he said, there remains yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, he kind of put a little, I got a young son, but he watches the sheep. Right. And chances are, you know, out there with all, I'm not going to say chances are, he probably smelled like animals. Mm -hmm. You know, he might have been a little dirty from out there. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't have had the statue or the appearance of someone that would be a king. king right. You know, he, right. he probably didn't look like a king. OK, right. but this is one thing that my wife and I talked about. Did you know that Samuel and David loved the Lord as they were young, when they were youth and, and that 
the youth in our church, the, your kids, my kids, our kids here in the ministry can be used for God at an early age. Mm -hmm. They don't have to be old mm -hmm. or wise or whatever, right. you know, right. up in years to be used by God. Right. God can use young children to do his work. Right. And uh, this is an example here of David. He said, I, my youngest, right. but he keeps the sheep. You know, you probably don't want to see him, but I'll call him anyway. Okay. And, and you know, that's a good point for the young people. Um, young people, well, I hear this. I hear this. Well, when I get older, yeah. you know, when I get older, I'm going to join church and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, well, why do you have to be older? You know, God wants you to serve him now or, or in uh, your youth, you know, while you're, while you're vigorous and while you can do a lot of things, you know, but they think that it's for older people. It's not for them. Or we'll hear this excuse, <laughs> um, when I get better, or, you know, let me get myself together, <laughs> you know, then maybe I'll, you can't get yourself together without God, mm -hmm. because if you could get yourself together without God, Jesus died in vain. You, he wouldn't have need to die if I could fix my own self, you know? <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> verse 11, um, and Samuel said unto Jesse, here are all thy children. And he said, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither. So he said, go get him. And as you read the lesson, it says that we're not going to eat till he come. Mm. But it says sit down right here. <laughs> but nevertheless, Samuel is saying, you go get him. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see this last son that you have. Mm -hmm. And you got to realize Samuel was the, the next thing to the king or priest. What he says goes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> verse 12. And he sent and brought him. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, okay? The lesson tells us that ruddy, um, he had red hair, okay? <laughs> His hair was reddish color, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and with all of the beauty and continence of a goodly to look. So David did look good. He was a handsome man. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, <laughs> and, the Lord, and the Lord said, arise and anoint him, for, for this is he. So they took that little young man that was small, that was the sheep keeper, and they and God told him to anoint him. Okay, I'm going to make one other quick statement here. Okay, this is very important. Uh, excuse me, Pastor. So after <laughs> after Samuel, after God told Samuel to anoint David. Okay, now we're, if you go to your book. Uh, Let's see right here, 32 and 34. Then Samuel, then Sam, then said Samuel, bring ye hither to me Agai, the king of the Amalekites. And Agai came unto him uh, decidedly, and Agai said, surely the bitterness of death is past. So Agai thinking, he all right now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, surely it's going to be okay now. Right, and me. Samuel said, as the sword had made woman childless, so shall thy mother be childless among women. And Samuel hewed Agar in pieces before the Lord and Gilgal. He cut him and killed him up in front of the <laughs> Lord. Samuel the prophet killed Agar, the king because Saul didn't do it. So Samuel took it upon himself to kill him and cut him up in pieces. <laughs> so I just had to share that with you because there was a prophet that was completing God's, uh, God's mission. Thank you all. <laughs>